everybody, and welcome back for some more Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Sorry about that along get break. We had a last minute forfeit and had to wait for these teams to get readied up, but these teams are reigning champions, Mississippi State University up against Wichita State University. So we've got our predictions on how this one's most likely going to go, but who knows? Brand new season, brand new players for a lot of these schools, so maybe things are shaking up a little. Exactly. We have the defending champs, Miss State. We do expect the Bulldogs to roll through as I to do a uh it looks like they're doing a what's it called a run it back tour but yes. then we also have wichita state they you know had a little bit of a you know a pretty good season last year it wasn't the best wasn't the worst though so we'll they respond and they are definitely the challenge going against the defending champs and i'm really seeing everyone again absolutely and i'm very excited. I'm going to keep talking so South Beach can figure out what's going on with his microphone, but we'll be jumping in in just a minute either way. I know that we have Bane the Enigma on the side of Wichita State University. I don't know who Mississippi State University's first time is going to be. I also don't recognize the name Bane, so perhaps it's a player that, uh, you know, simply rebranded, or perhaps it's a player that um, is brand new to the team, brand new to Wichita and EGFC as a whole. I'm sure we'll find out the answer to all these and we're in just a couple of now, Mississippi State University, they're a team that we are, of course, very familiar with. I had the honor of casting them in the grand finals where they won all the marbles by, like I said earlier, maybe two or three points. Like, really not a lot. It really came down to individual stocks, but they were able to take that victory over Paul University. And I know they've brought back a lot of those powerhouse players as well, so I'm really excited to see what they're going to be bringing to the table here today. Exactly, and if my microphone is working perfectly, we're going to have a and as what's it <laughs> i'm gonna have a case well i cut out didn't i all right yeah. so brain bane the enigma is yeah uh, you... see how this match up we we've lost you again i believe south beach but we have uh n city on the palutena which i don't remember if that is uh um something that we saw beforehand or if that's going to be changing things up just a little bit and i also spelled bane wrong in my notes so on me for that one. But we do have the Steve against the Palutena, so definitely going to be a very unique matchup. I feel like both these characters have had their time in the spotlight and perhaps fallen off the side just a little bit, but the uniqueness of kind of bringing out a Steve at a competitive level like this one, I think could give Bane a little bit of a leg up, and of course I say that well, even they're down double the percent that NCD's brought to the table. Exactly, and a great a move with the minecart going on. If I'm not cutting out at all, I gotta say, so far, uh, in cities putting on a show right here and look at that move thing. Wow, Wichita State up ahead and I don't know if you guys could hear that at all. Yeah, no, we did. We heard you loud and clear that time. Perfect. So yeah, you're, you're good for now. We'll let you know if you cut in or out once again. But yeah, I made a mistake at the beginning of the broadcast. I said Bane was from uh, Wichita State. I meant Mississippi. That was my bad. I that a little bit backward. But either way, we know who's who now. Bane is representing Mississippi State and City is here from Wichita. That is a player that played here last year. I do remember that we're seeing quite often as well. Now, Bane going to get upgraded to that diamond. I'm not sure the upgrade went all the way through. It looks like it is because the diamond is no longer in the inventory. So, Bane down by an entire stock. You're about to get lapped as well. And it's just touching 100%. Oh! He was willing to trap him with the TNT, but didn't, fortunately for NCD, was able to survive for a little bit. But then at the end, uh, Bane the Enigma able to capitalize at the very end, able to even up the stock series. Yeah, Bane the Enigma, uh, quite quite the mouthful of a name, but I've got to say, uh, an interesting one at that. Very unique name, not seen from a lot of other players. You see, oh, a great block from Bane there, just to make sure he doesn't get caught by that up smash. It's going to be 128%. Steve, or I guess Enderman in this case, not really that heavy. Can survive into a couple of higher percentages, but has to be super careful on out because of move. Just like that one's gonna get danger close to killing. I love, the, oh my goodness, the triple drop. Just trying to force NCD into a specific position. But once again, I believe that was the up air from the Paul Lutena taking the lead. Yeah, Bane trying to throw a little few too many traps there and NCD able to figure out where uh, Bane was gonna land and then able to capitalize on that last sock. So right now, surprisingly, Wichita State holding their own so far. Yeah, Wichita State coming out super strong. And as I mentioned earlier, Bane the Enigma is a new addition to Mississippi State. That, or it's a player that's changed their name, and I'm just not aware of that. But either way, it looks like, you know, playing Steve, that's of course going to be newer. And being new to the team, this is going to be a momentum boost kind of for Wichita State going into the rest of this. We see M-City's got a very aggressive lead for the being. Smash very much kind of been in their favor. And I'm really curious to see what's going to be 
coming off the back of this here as well. It's gonna be already three minutes off the clock. Both players down to that final stock. Bane has has shifted momentum just at least for a moment here. Yeah, and definitely Bane definitely putting on a lot more pressure, able to switch to diamonds and then push N City to the ledge. N City obviously able to get back on. And it's just, yeah, it's pretty much back and forth. I know Bane's definitely trying to do a lot of traps and all that, but NCD is oh. able to read them a lot well. And this, this could be interesting. This could be match right here, but Bane definitely being careful. Oh, wow, that recovery there, just kissing the top of the stage, keeping their distance and actually hitting NCD there was able to get them in. They didn't have to worry about kind of a follow-up move on the end lag. They go for the lava off, but that's gonna be a grab and a back throw. 0% chance of survival at over 130%. So Bane really finding a decent comeback there, but NCD just barely able to clutch out that win at the end. Yeah, and this was definitely a pretty good matchup for, uh, who was it? Uh, NCD as Palutina, I think definitely um can able to dodge all the you know the traps like with the dnt all the blocks and the minecarts especially although yeah. the minecart was definitely a big factor for bane the enigma of so course. we're i'm gonna i'm gonna expect to see more minecarts in this next one so i'm interested to see how he retaliates in this next match but right now wichita state starting off pretty hot with the first victory of the set yeah and i've got to say um bane in particular there really there was some great sense of adaptation so we saw bane their first stock to the up uh, the up special, the up smash from Palutena when they were off ledge, and then it, it didn't happen again. They used that block every single time to kind of bait out that up smash. Then they would move in. So just that quick automatic kind of improvement, that quick thinking is a sign of great promise for a player as an individual. So I would be curious if Bane carries this knowledge over into the next set, kind of moving in. We're going to have probably a different stage, I would suspect. I, I think Bane has a really good chance of winning this one. It seems like they've got very quick ability to adapt in any kind of matchup. Exactly. I think this is definitely quite an even matchup, but as you said earlier, Bane definitely has the potential to just win it all, even, or like win the remaining uh, sets, excuse me. But right now, I, I liked what I saw from NCD, able to take all those hits and then yep. able to counteract whatever um, he's got with him. So definitely going to be a really close match as we see, but we'll see how, uh, you know, this could be an early upset for Wichita State to pull off here, it would be incredible to see that. Yeah, very much so. I mean, like you said, starting strong and the only only able to net a single point. So obviously that's relatively easy to come back from. You know, uh, you have to win with only two stocks and you'll net yourself some points there. But I want to see if Wichita, like you said, did they, did they carry this momentum forward? I know that there's some real powerhouse players later down the line when we get into Mississippi State's kind of area of progress. So I, I want to see, uh, I know Connor Sanders mistaken he's team captain um if he's not you know he's still a good player right so i know that he could really probably net some points for state but wichita like i said they're, they're a team that i know i'm not super familiar with i only know a couple of them and if i'm not mistaken they also brought in some new players this year yeah i believe they did i mean there's de they definitely have some great uh pieces with uh lenny and geonosis as well definitely they've they've got depth they got the talent too it's just like last year they played some really really good teams as well so they've had a tough schedule last year but it looks like they're gonna look to bounce back and so far what we're seeing from them is pretty good it's pretty promising especially yeah. from n-city yeah, MCD just kind of diving in here, able to find up 90% on Bane. And I realized I actually don't know how many new players Wichita has because they didn't show up their meeting day. So we have no information about them, but we have plenty of information about Mississippi State. They are, of course, those reigning champions, and they are definitely trying to show that here. Bane turning the tables a lot, took a lot of damage early on, but MCD now up to nearly 100%. We're only a 2% difference. Great TNT drop into Anvil there, but I do worry Bane's becoming a wee bit predictable with that. We've seen it happen, the double drop into trying to recover low on stage so they've got to be really careful not to fall into the same kind of uh, comfort combos yeah in city did had set up the perfect trap able to push bane all over the stage and then once he flew off to the edge of the stage as he takes that next stock uh able to trap trap bane and then take him out with the side with the side b or with the fireball i think fireball is side b i think right uh, I, I don't it's remember. Been I don't a while play since I played Palutena. Side B, neutral B. I don't know. I don't play Palutena. I, Fireball. I, I know. I know Nair. You know that, that's an yes. important one for Palutena. But other than that, I don't remember which one that is her ability for. 
It's going to be Bane here has, again, oh, I, I really goodness. like the combo. So puts the block down, kind of forces them to bounce off of it. Would have been great if it knocked the NCD kind of down below the stage. They did end up hitting a grab. Probably going to lead to back throw, but NCD actually ends up flipping the grab. Not going to be great for the percentages here. 76 to 3, so very neck and neck between the two. Yeah, I don't know if that uh, grab was just a misinput with the controller, or I don't know if Bane was able to escape from that. It must, but either way, Bane was very lucky to survive that hit, and it's just very, very dead even. Both of them able to like set up traps for each other. It's pretty insane how they're playing right now. Yeah, we've seen some very uh, trap-based gameplay, and Steve, oh. uh, we see that a lot, you know, technically Enderman right now, but it's the same matchup, it's the same set, so to speak. So we see a lot of them going for um, usually redstone TNT combos. We've been seeing a lot of that from Thane, but we are seeing great utilization of the TNT. Oh my goodness, saved by the bell, saved by their own wool block there. Gets to live a little longer, finds oh. the back air as well. Even ends up taking the lead, has diamond tools, but might want to hold off on that for just a little bit here. Grabs the fishing rod into the anvil down, so into the down throw. Some great value, only 20% extra credit though. You're gonna want to find a little bit more. Flint and steel certainly gonna help into a flint air. This is a really good look right now for Bane. He might be able to force us into a stage three. That flint and steel's definitely helping him. We needed more of that from the last game, but it looks like it's coming in clean right now. And now he's brought out the diamonds. So let, we're gonna see a lot more heavy hits from Bane. Yeah, and I'm still not super familiar with Steve, uh, just full honesty, but I believe if you do make diamond tools, when you die, you get reset, so it makes a lot of sense to hold on to that diamond, because, you know, you're at 100%. You save yourself a lot of time not having to farm two diamonds. NCD yeah. now 91%. This really feels like there's a very good chance Bane forces us into a stage three. I think so, and I tell you what, Steve, Enderman, Zombie, all those guys, Alex even, they, their moveset is so vast, so it's hard to keep up with, like, what they all can do set blocks at TNT. There's so there's so much in their arsenal, which that's one of the dangers of facing these guys from the Minecraft series. It's just, you, it, they're pretty unpredictable. It's just trying to, you're trying to d dodge too many things that you don't even know what's going to come at you too. Right, absolutely. If there's any kind, of, any kind of action here, Bane going up to 84% has to be super careful. Palutena, she's got a lot of kill power. Might go for the up smash here and Unfortunately, Ooh. Bane does fall to it, though. NCD able to take a 2-0 victory, giving Wichita some very solid momentum moving. Yeah, that was a very hard battle. Give uh, Bane the Enigma his credit that he's due, because he stuck with it as much as he could, able to push NCD to last stock. But NCD pulls off the first upset of the series, or the, yeah, of the series. So we'll see if Wichita State can keep this up. But definitely, you know, we've seen Miss, uh, Mississippi State do this so many times. They're really, really good. But Wichita State right now, what we're seeing, especially from N City, definitely, definitely some good moves and good strategy. So let's see if they can keep this up. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got to talk about as well, you know, NCD and EGFC veteran have been around at least since last year. And it, Bane the Enigma, this was kind of there, at least again, as far as I'm aware, EGFC debut. So maybe there were a little bit of nerves in there, just a little bit of shakiness. And we can really see that, you know, that may have made all the difference. NCD down to last stock, last hit, both games. So really super close, some great potential clearly available in the form of Bane the Enigma. And I'm just excited to see some Steve gameplay. Like I said earlier, I just love kind of those, those niche and unusual characters. I'm really excited to see what Bane can do moving into the later week. Yes, indeed. I'm excited to see that as well. He's definitely got a lot of potential, uh, Bane the Enigma does. So they, he is playing with the defending champ. So, of course, that's going to help boost his confidence as well. And if I'm not mistaken, we're going to our second match or yes. a yes, quick break. Was... Second match? Uh, you know, I think we do. Let's find out. Okay, it's going to be Canoe versus... versus Sleepy Joe. And are they in line? All right, so they're going to be in lobby in just a minute. There's no point in us throwing to a break for you guys. So we're just going to talk a little bit more about Smash Ultimate. We can talk about Sora, who made finally his Smash Bros. debut today. Uh, I don't think a lot of us were surprised by that. I talked earlier about this. I Personally, mm -hmm. I'm not stoked. I'm not a big Kingdom Hearts guy, but I'm stoked that other people are so happy because I feel like a lot of people have been rooting, tooting, ready for shooting in terms of wanting Sora in the game. Oh, and I'm... And I just got to say, I think Disney's finally about to conquer the world as they make their way through Nintendo this way. Uh, probably not going to happen, but it's great that they're making their presence known. And, you know, that's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Sora plays out. I think yeah. especially when he comes out and this will be this will be week three when he'll be more playable. We might see some of our EGF 
players use him in some ways, and I can't wait to see like all the combos they throw out because if anyone knows how to figure out um, Sora on the fly, it's uh, our very own EGF veterans and rookies. So I can't wait to see what we got from him. Yeah, absolutely. I know people are drawing a lot of comparisons to Smash 4 Bayonetta, and I'm hoping Sora's not that broken because Bayonetta mm. really shook up everything we knew about Smash 4. So I'm hoping that uh, Sora is a little more balanced, but he is a DLC character, so who knows. What I do know is we've got Canoe. I, I recognized the name, and now I know why. Going to be that Jigglypuff player. If I'm not mistaken, a rather seasoned one at that. I remember that being a very impressive player. Now we've got Joe here on the Aegis. That's going to be pretty exciting to see uh, the Pinthra making an appearance once again. Uh, Pyro and Mithra, but yes, it's going to be starting out with uh, Mithra. Yep. And definitely right now it's on. What's the word? Battlefield. Battlefield. Yeah, yeah, I can't true. believe I couldn't say that, but that's <laughs> the stage. So this is a good neutral stage for both of these characters. So I'm definitely psyched to see how this is going to play out for both of them. Missed opportunity right there. Yeah, and I, I know Canoe is a very tried and true player in the form of a really does look for those um, uh, sleep rest combos, and we see that pretty often. Um, I remember them doing that quite a few times last season, so I'm surprised to see that again. And there's the sleep. Let's see if we have the short hop rest right after it. No, instead oh. goes for the up air, so trying to go for a little bit of a combo change. They're only able to find one hit, though, and I feel like as Jigglypuff, you'd really want to take advantage of that rest, but I think Canoe kind of processed, you know, was not going to kill, so it sets them up for a kill confirmed. They've got to be super careful. Now Sleepy Joe swapping onto the Pyra, so really looking to deal some more damage yeah and you know that might have been also a uh you know maybe a miss input as well i'm not quite sure you know mississippi state some in some cases they've i don't know if they're a little bit rusty or on that championship hangover but i mean they're still playing at a high level nonetheless but right now they're you can kind of see wsu trying to make something happen and combating the defending champs at a pretty high level yeah, very much so. Wichita State, they're keeping it close, but Canoe with that forward aerial, able to find that first stock now. A Jigglypuff at 103%, you can pretty much just get, like, poked and get sent into the stratosphere. So Canoe's going to have to be that. super careful. We saw that, just barely hit, and yeah. almost took them out into the blast zone. Yeah, do you see the taunt at the end of the first stock? It looks like Canoe's out for blood. Yeah, Canoe's feeling good. I mean, as a Jigglypuff player, can't get 120. Can't believe it. We saw right there, up air, yeah. barely <laughs> touched and killed at 120. So. Jigglypuff, mm -hmm. not super strong. Might go for rest on top platform yeah, yeah. and finds the kill there. Very intelligent play. Definitely something you expect to see, but the Pithra does spawn fast enough that they were able to get in, you find 8% of damage. Canoe looking very good to take this first set, first game. Rather. You know, I I probably would have gone like right at, at, as soon as I spawn, I probably would have gone Pyra just for a little bit as soon as you have that small invincibility after you spawn so you can get some more damage off right there. But either way, it's still it's still an even match, but 46, 53 percentage, but with one stock and this could be it. Nope. Yeah, that was definitely not going to be uh, quite what we're looking for, so to speak. Um, <laughs> Joe not able to get the land and walks and right into it. We might not see the rest. Oh, okay, I was going to say, okay, yeah. I was going to say, that might be a little bit uh, too low percent to kill, but Canoe obviously knows this character a million times better than I have. I mean, I play Jigglypuff. I never have, and I probably never will. No offense to those who do. I think it's really neat to watch them. Jigglypuff just doesn't fit my uh, style of Canoe, though, one of the lightest characters in the game, really making a statement, especially because Pyro, like I said earlier, hits super hard. So I expected Canoe to die at some low percentages, but I guess if you never give him the chance to hit you, it doesn't really matter. Exactly. And we touched on this a little bit. Mithra is definitely really great at the neutral game, probably the best neutral character in the game. And then you can switch over to Pyra to do those heavy, you know, heavy damage hits. So I expected more because, like, there was definitely, like, times where um who was it sleepy to just do the um you know switch over to pyra get some damage even probably could have taken a stock like especially on this platform right here this isn't the exact replay but there was a time where uh canoe missed the uh missed the rest and then you could have just switched over to pyra and just taken that stock but you know this is only game one so there's definitely some learning right here and we'll see how joe reacts into game two absolutely canoe able to find Two rest kills, uh, arguably Jigglypuff's most popular kill confirm. I mean, we see that all the time. We also see Jigglypuffs very often go for, you know, using those hops off stage, forward air, forward air, forward air. Usually it knocks them into the blast zone, but rest is a little bit more, uh, 
objective in getting a kill. If they're over like 65%, it's a decent chance it's going to kill almost every character in the game. So definitely a, a confident kill confirm can do there. Looking very good. We talked about, you know, NCD was able to find that momentum, but Wichita State's Joe, this is their EGF debut as well. Again, as far as I'm concerned, I didn't get any information about them changing names because they didn't show up to their media day. So if they did, how could we know that? Either way, Sleepy Joe looking a little bit rough here. Canoe looking to take a 2-0 victory. Yep, and it looks like we're going to get to know him here in this uh, set right now. A little bit more of the play style, but definitely the Pyra Mithra. We saw some pretty good flashes. Oh! And oh my goodness, there you go. And switching over to the Pyra, um, already taking our advice. Tied. So, Dang. man, that, look how quick that switched over. That was a yeah. quick advantage for Canoe. And then just the missed rest, trying to be a little bit flashy was flashy right there and look at that taunt once again yeah, sometimes sometimes you don't have to be flashy you know can you went a little bit aggressive there. i really couldn't tell if that rest was some overconfidence perhaps a bit of hubris or if it was just a missing input because it happened so suddenly but perhaps that was the idea you know to catch the pit for off guard as well oh but speaking oh, of getting caught off guard can do with 113 percent gonna bite that first bullet only a 12 percent difference here well, you're starting to see more pyra in action definitely trying to close out some hits uh, obviously Mithra, you definitely want to use Mithra, so we have that in there, but especially once you get Jigglypuff into high enough percent damage, which honestly not don't have to be too high for Jigglypuff, and then you switch over to Pyra, that can be easily to take away a stock. Yeah, we can see Canoe doing what I was talking about earlier, just kind of that forward air, forward air, forward air general news, and it's um, kind of Jigglypuff's strong, I don't know if they strongest ability, but most consistent. You can really rack up a lot of damage, especially if they don't DI out of it, you can combo like row. Now the rollout off stage, uh, definitely a unique choice, but maybe one that's gonna make a world of difference. They sneak themselves underneath this platform, gonna be able to re-engage with another short out forward air. It's gonna be that tried and true match. I think that was a down air from the uh, pirate there, trying to get some damage in. 80% to 67, I'd say 80 for a Jigglypuff. Oh my goodness. It's pretty close to kill. Wow. 80 turns into 100 and the next hit almost guaranteed gonna kill Canoe here. That was insane. You gotta, yeah, if you're Joe, you're thinking, how did that not kill him? It was just a little bit of stage placement that saved Canoe's butt. But in, instead, you know, it's close. Now it's 100 to 100%. Dang, this is 0. insane. 0.5% difference. That's the second time that's happened. Earlier in the match, I think it was like 40 something percent. Now 100%. Joe gets bounced away, cannot re engage. Canoe still rocking and rolling at 108%. Not for much longer, though. Yep, now all the way to 122. Joe at 11. Joe's trying to make something happen here. My goodness, the stage placement is really coming in clutch for Canoe right now. Absolutely, yeah. And I think maybe there was an, uh, a choice kind of in choosing final listen if you want to get rid of the platform to make it a little bit harder to kill with rest. But as we've seen from Canoe, they don't really need a rest to succeed, right? It's just been, that's kind of an option they take when they know they can rather than need to take. Like I said, rest is usually the most kill confirm for Jigglypuff, but a good Jigglypuff doesn't need it. It's usually a little more for show. Right. And speaking of show, we're seeing uh, Canoe kind of just toying around, just jumping oh. up and down, crouching up and down. And I can't believe can, that's the third time that Canoe has survived a big hit, and it's just because of where he was at the stage. Four times, and that one I don't know why. Yeah, no, not not uh, not only have they been kind of in good stage locations, but they have not been able to find the sweet spot, just like Canoe did there with another rest kill. The third of the six stocks available. Canoe gonna win in a 2-0 fashion here, giving Mississippi State that might have given them a one-point lead. I'm not positive. Yeah, it's either I think it's two point lead, six to four. Yes, yeah, six to four. That's two what. Point. Okay. That's that's what it says below us at least. Perfect. Um, but yeah, no, that was a great uh, showing from Canoe. Um, obviously, definitely showing off the rest with Jigglypuff, but then also was able to just really hold in, being right. able to just stay like, honestly, kind of like the ability to just be in one part of the stage and just like you know not die, especially when you're at like 120 and 130 because Jigglypuff. All it takes is a flick, and then she's gone. But able to, I mean, kind of, kind of walked away from that one a little bit, if I do say so myself. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to agree. Can you? Uh, things were a little bit, you know, a, a little bit closer there at the beginning of stage two on Final Destination. But Canoe you found their footing? They picked up that momentum, and they really began to run away with it. And it it's mm -hmm. going to be a positive showing. Cause like I said, the Mississippi yeah. State roster that I remember, I mean, they won, right? You don't win on accident. Like it is a very right. strong roster. It's a very strong team, and Wichita State's. 
not making the punch perhaps NCD made it seem like they were going to so I really am curious I always say you know this third matchup I actually got this from Soy he always says this is pivotal right this is the the, the most important matchup because whoever wins the third one gives themselves a guaranteed advantage moving into the second half but we'll be right back with that second half in just a minute we're gonna get two new players in here and we'll see you folks right back my friends we're gonna be jumping in mississippi state university up against wichita state university and the interesting thing about this i believe this is the first round we don't have somebody making the egfc debut this is two star-studded veteran players in the form of yosifu from mississippi state university Re uh, recently went to glitch i know that he did that i don't know how it went but i know that he was there and then uh, there it is there there it is from wichita state university also going to be going kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe here i'm really curious which one of these folks is going to walk away at least with round one Yes, and it's going to be a Belmont Simon versus Link. Left name is just Link. So. <laughs> Link is It's like the Mario Mario thing. Called the exactly. Mario Brothers. You know, that was so yeah. much, so much. But Yosufu, um, one of the more consistent uh, players here in the EGFC, which playing Belmont on Wi-Fi is obviously going to be a little bit easier than playing a person because it's much harder to react to the projectile spam. But as we've seen, you know, from the wiki that Yosufu has, they're very clearly just as strong offline as they are online already finding 107 percent on the there it is in not even 30 seconds yeah it's 24 to 116 it's already just you can see all the projectiles flying from simon belmont and i mean like both of these characters they're projectile heavy but right now we're seeing all the projectiles from simon and we need to see more from there it is and there he went and there went his stock <laughs> Absolutely, there it is, losing the stock. He's barely taking 70%, just now taking a lot of that extra damage. Sends the boomerang in, trying to kind of give himself um, an available cleanup. He goes for the down special instead. The holy water covering ledge. Oh. To cover the jump option. Now, this is super intelligent, right? This is how you play these projectile-based characters. He wants to get them off stage, and they use the projectiles to cover every recovery option. I, I thought that was a really intelligent play there. Exactly. I think definitely the holy water for sure is going to be really, really helpful, especially when you're going against Link, because it's kind of like a uh, PK fire from Ness specifically, sure. just because of all the damage. It just repeats off of them, and then you can get stuck a little bit like that. So definitely going to be a really big factor. So. There it is. Might be able to find this first stock before losing their second, but again, Yosufu, as long as they keep up the projectile pressure, I think that can make a big difference. And speaking of a big difference, I think there it is. Uh, were they utilizing their own projectiles a little bit, I think that really would make a world of difference, but it seems like this Link wants to go for that constant re-engage, kind of that push forward. Goes for the up B there. I'm not a huge fan of that, especially against a Rick, uh, Belmont, rather, because they can knock you right out of that with so many... Now, there it is. On our ledge, once again, Yosufu looks like they're getting ready 
going for a three stock. Yeah, I, this is reminding me of like when I go up against that. It's just, it's just holy water, uh, shuriken, boomerang thing, and then axe, and then just repeat. It's just constantly like that, especially on the edge. You just don't let off the B button, and then you just put your analog stick wherever the direction you can, and then it just comes out with an axe, boomerang, holy water. That's all. That's all Joseph Joseph needs, and that's why he's one of the best in this state. Yeah, not quite able to find the three stock, but, you know, two stocks is still good. Those are still two additional points. Assuming that they find this before there it is, can kind of get that recovery. I'm surprised that there it is went up Ooh. instead of out, but it doesn't Whoa. matter. Just the spike there from the chain, the whip is going to be able to find that kill. Yosufu with the JV3. And if I'm not mistaken, did he hit a projectile as he was going off? Because it looked like he went on a different direction. Well, let's... We'll take a look at the replays in yeah. just a second. I, I didn't catch it because I was more shocked that that whip had hit it all, kind of at that weirdly, not even a downward angle, just almost right. like a slant, and it did find the kill out of there. It is Yosefu looking just as strong as ever as if the EGFC had never come to a close, but I really do want to yeah. take a look here, and one of these replays will give us a good example of what happened. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, what can you say about his game? It's just projectile, projectile galore. There's the one stock. This might it be is. it here, yep. Yeah. There's the spike. Yeah, see how I, he flies I, up a little bit? Did he hit the boomerang? Yeah. Wait, let's see. He did. So there's the at. He must have hit the. Wait. No, okay. there's nothing out there. Interesting. Okay. I, I guess it just hit him off ledge and he went up instead of out. It was weird because we had that same interaction yeah. with Axe earlier where he went straight up instead of any other direction. So some weird DI there, some weird um, just directions from the projectiles Eight themselves. Boxes. Yeah, uh, but Yosufu didn't even mind, didn't even blink, able to really find a two-stock victory. So uh, Mississippi State going to find themselves up 8-4 now, I believe. Mm-hmm, 8-4 for Mississippi State. And Yosufu, definitely one of the reasons why Mississippi State is the reigning defending champions in the EGFC in terms of Smash Bros. I mean, he's just been incredibly consistent, especially with Simon. So you just got to... You got a really game plan against Yosefu once, whenever you're going up against him. Yeah, absolutely. I like the way you said that. You got a game plan. You, you have to go in. We talked about that earlier, proactive versus reactive. You can't, I mean, and I guess as a link, you want to kind of be reactive. You want to use your projectiles accordingly, but you need to be proactive at least a little bit. You need to be going, you know, I want to set up this combo. I want to go for this thing. Because if you just think, oh, I'll play against my opponent. You know, if you're just trying to play in the moment, especially against a projectile-based character, that it's going to be really difficult to turn around. We're going to be jumping into stage two here. Young I forgot Link. to write down what stage one was, though. And now we're seeing Young Link now on PS2. So arguably the better out of the three Links is coming into yes. the play. So we'll see how this uh, changes things for There It Is. Yes, yeah, so we talked about this earlier, uh, actually off stream, we were talking with our producer, Anne, about how Young Link is kind of the superior Link because he does what the other Links should do, just a little bit better, a little bit faster, and um, is able to consistently find some damage. Of course, is lighter, so that's the uh, one downside, so to speak. But right now, it seems to be, there it is, picking up at least a little bit of a combo, not quite able to turn it around, almost caught out by the holy water. It looks like they are kind of taking um, some advice from what I mentioned earlier, utilizing their own projectile a little bit more. And unfortunately, it's not going to matter when you get caught the whole fire like that. Just like PK fire, it holds you in place, and then the whip just found there it is. Yep, I can hear Ness's voice saying, holy water, <laughs> holy water, just in the back that of my head. It's definitely, it, it is what it is. That's what I gotta say. But definitely we want to see more of a projectile versus projectile battle, but it's just been, the projectiles have been coming from one side. Yeah, so I think the issue here um, in terms of the projectile battle is Young Link, I feel, relies a little bit more heavily on projectiles than uh, regular Link, so to speak. And uh, the, the way the Belmonts work is sure they, I don't say they rely on projectiles, they utilize them quite often, but they've got, you know, at least decent rushdown potential. I feel like other than the dash attack, Link really struggles to get up close and personal. Maybe an up smash if they kind of drop down on top of you, but there it is, really struggling wow. to find these setups, already losing that second shot, 90 seconds. Yeah, and that was a just great placement with the holy water, able to throw, there it is, onto the holy water, and then follow up with the whip, with the chain whip, and then, there it is, takes the stock away, so, gives his chances slightly, a little bit slimmer, but still, it looks like Yosef is controlling this, controlling this game in and out. Yeah, Yosef has got this just... Oh my goodness. 
I mean, the, no the cat's out of the mercy. bag, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, no mercy, that's a great way to put it. Absolutely taking no prisoners, as there it is, 103%. And again, you know, wasn't able to find the three stock, but that's the beauty of kind of how it works here, is it's not your traditional expectation of a stock battle. It's going to be um, just winning the game is what matters, right? Sure, you get additional points for kind of picking up um, stocks here and there, but it's not the end of the world if you end up losing stocks. So walking away with four out of six, like that's not bad at all. Exactly. There, yeah, Wichita State's just down eight. So if they did, for example, if they did a back-to-back -back three stock, a six stock in this next match, then that just immediately ties the game. So yeah. they're still pretty much in this, even though if they don't get the, uh, if you, even if they don't get the six stock, they're still pretty much in this game. Don't don't count them out yet. So it, this will go to like this will be critical for until game five comes around. Absolutely, and I'm I. I I know Connor Sanders is still in here somewhere, and I know Connor Sanders is a very good player. So the idea mm -hmm. of Wichita State finding a double three stock, um, it doesn't feel impossible, but it feels definitely unlikely. I don't know who the fifth player from MSU is going to be today. They've got, what is it, like 19 players on the or something? 15 players. So it really could Yeah, be, I think 15. It yeah. could be a lot of people. But Wichita State, I don't think they have kind of those same groups, so to speak. I don't think they have as many players to choose from. They didn't show up to their meeting. So we don't know how many players they have. <laughs> yeah, we got to cut them a little bit slack on the media day. But at the same time, we'll, we'll learn from them more as they as the season goes around either way. But definitely what we're learning right now is Mississippi State, they have showed no signs of slowing down from uh, last season. And they're on pace to try to run it back, possibly against DePaul, maybe a rematch of less semester i'm not sure how the other schools are doing yet um but because this is the second game i'm casting so <laughs> we definitely have to see what how the other schools are faring and maybe they're gonna make a case to you which is off state though they're doing their best to make a case right now and i think you know as as the season progresses i've seen some good signs from them so oh, maybe yeah. they'll make us make a scene you know who else plays for mississippi state i knew there was somebody's mia it's the mario play known as mm. Maze, um, MIA, an insane Mario. One oh, and look at that, boom, <laughs> right on the money. MIA is gonna be the player that's coming right. in. So that totally checks out an absolute powerhouse of a player. Um, I know, I remember, uh, really likes the forward air as most Marios do, really does go for those dunks. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that happening here. Um, I'm, I'm just very excited. I, I really like mm -hmm. Geonosis is coming in for WSU and I do not remember the player he plays. Maybe Ness? Or I'm totally I, thinking of somebody else? No, I remember the name Geonosis. I want to say Joker, but I don't know if I'm right on that. I just remember the name Geonosis. I, I lost my spreadsheet yes. from last year. So, um, mm -hmm. oh, it's a, learning something new every day. Our producer just informed us that Geonosis planet from Star Wars. So that, that makes sense. I've kind of always wondered yes. about that, Matt. There's a, there's a couple players throughout this that, uh, I don't know, Aloma Mola. I don't know what they're when I say their name. I'm like, what does that mean? What does that mm -hmm. mean? But, um, oh, and it's a Pokemon. Dang. I, Aeon's just got all the knowledge for us. So, uh, Geonosis, yeah. I, I think, is a Joker player, but I'm not positive on that. If they aren't, you know, who cares? We'll find out in just a minute. But either way, I'm IA, and that makes me think that, uh, um, is it, is it Mr. Man? I think that's a player for MIA, or uh, for MSU 12, and that's a ZSS mm -hmm. player. I so, that I yes. think they said in their notes that their starting roster involves both those players. So, that might be who kind of makes an appeal. It's Bowser. That's who wow. it is. Wow. Look at this classic Nintendo time. matchup. The, we can call this the Princess Peach Bowl. Whoever wins gets the princess. Yeah, I mean, this is a tale as old as time. Geonosis does play the Bowser. I don't know why I thought it was Joker. Oh, Aloma Mola plays Joker. I got I got my players mixed up in my head. That's completely my own fault. But yeah, Geonosis rocking and rolling on the Bowser, finding two side Bs already, up to 70% onto MIA. MIA, oh, and that's another thing. I know MIA really likes that cape, really likes to kind of turn people around and interrupt combos. But as a Mario player, you kind of have to. You know, that's, a, that's a little less unique than relying on forward air. Um, so grab into down throw, goes for the up smash, but wasn't quite able to find it. Short hop into forward air. So a lot of great combos. And yep. there's that forward air. Looks for it not once, but twice. <laughs> And yep, it looks like Geonosis is trying to regain a little bit of traction by just hanging on to that ledge a little bit. The nice thing about Bowser, as slow as he is, that might help a little bit. Now hear me out, if you're going against a fast player like Mario, who's not like the fast, he's not Sonic fast, don't get me wrong. But in terms of like hitting out combos, dishing them out, 
you can like slowly get back control and you're heavy that didn't work oh. in geonosis's favor but either way a little good love tap from geonosis right there and now it's back to dead even i lost I forgot what I was talking about earlier. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm pretty sure, and I'm not positive again, but I think Bowser's the heaviest character in the game. It's either him or Kairi, yes. one of the two. And it's like a three pound difference or something crazy like that. So basically, heaviest character in the game. So that definitely struggles a little bit against a character who wants to play uh, a little more offstage, the way that Mario, uh, MIA in particular. Was... What was that spike? What was that? <laughs> that that was some pace switching. That's what I'll say right that there. Was clunky. Yeah, MIA was just dishing out. He was just throwing hands, and then all of a sudden, Geonos is just out of nowhere, just turned the tides. And it looks yeah. like it's going back into MIA's favor. Yeah, MIA with the uh, short hop forward air into another forward air was smart. A third one would have probably killed Geonosis because they were just getting closer and closer to the ledge. Ray used the side beat, and notice that Geonosis didn't fall off the stage intentionally. They chose to avoid that, trying to keep that stock for as long as possible, but maybe now they wish they would have because MIA takes that second stock before Geonosis can find it. Although I will say Geonosis, good thing he's Bowser because he's taking all the damage he can and lasting a little bit long. And speaking of dishing out all the damage, Mario again. Oh. Throwing all the hands. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but that's just a little too unfortunate. I, I didn't quite catch it, but I think the fireball ate the recovery on the side of Geonosis, so that was a little bit unfortunate. Um, but MIA winning there, I think that was kind of a given, just really started to run away with that stock on had a great turnaround, so I I, I I feel for Geonosis on that one, but I think we're going to be able to see some great improvements moving forward into the rest of the set. Um, hopefully some adaptation, and I would like to see a little bit more mid-stage control from Geonosis. I think they were allowing MIA to really pop off off stage. Yeah, I'm not sure if this was Geonosis' uh, stage of choice. I'm not sure if that would work out for him. Maybe... I'm not. I honestly not quite sure what stage would work best for him. There's... He probably knows for sure more than I do, but definitely. So here it is right here. Yeah, that fireball definitely ate up the recovery. And it looked like he kind of, it looked like Geonosis held down a little bit more. So he kind of, yeah, I think he probably thought he was a little bit higher up in the air than he actually was. So he thought he could probably grab the ledge. Didn't quite work out for him. But right now, um, I got to say, though, Ge Geonosis definitely held his own. If you see a Mario pop lock pop off like that you have no business surviving that game yeah and uh, there's definitely something to note as well that geonosis has to win next uh this next game with at least two stocks and then go on to win the third one and then the fifth player from wichita also has to win so things are looking um not definitely not impossible not sure. but certainly tough you're going against the reigning champions of course and I think Mississippi State's final player, had I to guess, it's going to be Mr. Man. During that last game, I did. I found my spreadsheet from last year. I pulled it up, and Mr. Man is a player for MSU, or at least was, maybe graduated. I have no idea. But either way, I, I think that um, this is going to be an uphill battle for the rest of this series here for Wichita. Yeah, and no pressure for Wichita State whatsoever. Of course. You, you, got, you got this. You totally got this. But, yeah, I mean, definitely what we saw from Geonosis, definitely uh, how he was able, like that one play where he broke up that huge combo when mario just dropped 80 percent damage on him or 85 percent able to throw in a little bit of a reverse spike mia did recover from that but if he pulls out more of that stuff this stage okay Cha cha train of thought train of thought this stage might help bowser a little bit more well this is actually the first time that we've seen uh Kalos today at least a lot yeah. of i missed it and forgot to write it down but i'm pretty sure this is the first time we've actually seen Kalos today so I'm super excited. I think Geonosis can benefit a lot from those platforms on the side because you can side be close to the blast zones and you don't have to worry about falling off the stage unless, of course, MIA goes for that double kill and forces the momentum further than the platform. MIA, though, already finds 112% on the Geonosis. I mean, it's not even been 30 seconds. It is, yeah, my, MIA throwing hands once again, popping off all the way already at 52 now, but definitely just doing what he did last time is just try to force himself into those combos that Mario's so deadly at. And there's the fire breath from Bowser. That's good separation. That's not going to help. Though. Yeah, and if Geonosis does find a guaranteed victory, or excuse me, if Geonosis loses this, rather, that will be a guaranteed victory for a state as the most points a player can get is 8. Uh, 4 plus 8 is not 14. It is 12. So uh, Geonosis has to walk away with at least a couple of points to keep the dream alive. <laughs> Yep, and this is definitely his. This is definitely his time to shine. 
right now, and MIA is definitely not going to make that easy for him, no matter what. They're still trying to show that Mississippi is, once again, they are the champs, and there's a reason why they are the champs. And great fireball movement, or excuse me, fire breath, flame breath. Yeah, that's Pota really good. Potato, potato. potato. Yeah, same thing. It was, it was fire. You got you got the important <laughs> down, but it's gonna be MIA there. Um, it was a great stagger kind of from Geonosis trying to MIA to engage or perhaps go a little bit higher from recovery. Unfortunately, MIA just played those iframes through it and grab Geonosis where it hurts. It's gonna be 128 to 111, but MIA over an entire stock in the lead right now. Looking for the secondary tail on Geonosis. Gonna go up and... high, but Bowser, the heaviest character in the game, not gonna fall quite yet. Yep, yeah, he's definitely got some weight under him. He's not gonna go wow. down that easily and neither is MIA that's amazing how he was able to survive that just all Geonosis needs is just one good hit there, there it is, is. <laughs> turn around hit now you've tied up the stocks but Geonosis even even the heaviest character in the game 152 insanely high percent you've got to be super careful Mario's got plenty of kill confirms we've seen it already I mean, grab in the back throw, into a forward air, even a neutral B off stage to eat the recovery. There's so many ways this goes early for Geonosis, and I'm sure they are thanking their lucky stars for Magnum here. I'm shocked they're able to find that recovery. Probably the cape. Yeah, gonna be able to grab it there, but it's gonna be that down smash that does pick up that second stock on the Geonosis. It looks like Mario wants Princess Peach more than Bowser in this case. Like, definitely a lot of, there was a lot of pressure going on for Geonosis trying to recover. Uh, MIA was just not having it, throwing all the fireballs, and then it was finally the side air to finish it off. Yeah, the side air, um, the forward air is going to be able to find some great value for Mario as well, which that happened quite a few times. Uh, like I said earlier, MIA really does like trying to find that engagement if they're lucky enough, but it looks like they really didn't need to rely on it much. Geonosis is already up to 90% over 100 now. I'm surprised we didn't see an up B from MIA there, honestly. I'm not sure it would have killed, but it definitely would have interrupted any momentum that Geonosis was looking for. Yeah, that would have definitely helped. It's not a Luigi up there, but it's right, right. definitely gonna it's de it's gonna take some damage for you and it for sure and definitely oh. puts pressure on. Speaking of damage, that does it for Geonosis. Yeah, MIA is going to make sure that Geonosis remains MIA, able to win both of those. I believe with two stocks left here. Oh, actually, two stocks with both of them, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, just a great job from MIA so far. And that does confirm a victory for Mississippi State. So a very strong start. They've won on their second through matchup. And they'll have a fifth matchup here in just a couple of minutes. Yep. And great, great work. Great, uh, great work from Mississippi State uh, showing that they're still, they're still fresh. They're still fresh off their championship. But a little bit of promise for Wichita State, especially from N-City. Um, definitely in that first game. Uh, we got we got to see a little bit more step up from everybody else on Wichita State, but I'm confident it's only week one. They'll figure out a way to get it together. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I'm curious to see kind of what happens in terms of Mississippi. They are, I don't want to call them like number one seed because I don't think anybody's like seeded for this, but you get what I mean. Like they were the grand champion, one of the top dogs. Like they're the team to look out for. That's going to be tough. We talked about this with Marquette versus DePaul is starting your season going up against one of the top teams. Like that hurts. It's super difficult, but right side you theoretically won't go up against anybody else as tough as the reigning champions because they won for a reason so wichita win or lose you know they lose week but there's seven more weeks before playoffs so they've really got a lot of time to recuperate find some other teams in the season and help out that win loss a little exactly and it's great to like you know go up against the defending champions probably arguably the best team first so now you could be right. like okay i'm gonna envision facing off mississippi state every week and now and they'll be more prepared and be a little bit more aggressive even as they as the season progresses yeah and this is of course a very caster thing to say because i know as a player it's never fun to lose but you do get to look back at this the one good thing you get out of this is possible vod review you know you think like why was it so easy to kill me there like am i being a little bit too repetitive which i feel is often what we see kind of go wrong with players it's just expected repetition and that that's what separates in my opinion the goods from the greats the goods can win, but they're very repetitive with the greats. They read that repetition. They're able to thrive off of it and succeed. So I really think that's what Mississippi State's been able to utilize and kind of take advantage of. Uh, I don't know if our final two players are in lobby yet. It's going to be Linny versus who? Natty Light. Hey, Light. I mean, Natty Light is on Wichita, if I'm not mistaken. Natty Light is Mississippi State. Oh, man. Hey. So close, man. So close. I had a 50 50, and I was still wrong. Remember, I went to Wichita State. I know things there. <laughs> I lost a 50-50. That, that's, that's unfortunate. 
And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Linny is Mega Man. Do not take my word for it, though. I I'm excited to see. Uh, yeah. I don't think we've seen any Mega Mega Men today, so that would definitely be a good change of pace. And Wichita State, uh, Mississippi State as well, this is kind of the scenario where they're just playing the game, right? This has just kind of become a scrim, if you will, going for the practice, so on and so forth. We're going to have to see what the successes are here for Mississippi State. Natty Light, you know, if they get the eight points, they'll be able to score uh, exactly what uh, DePaul did, hitting that 26 marker. So we'll have to see if we see a double three stock from Natty Light. But Linny, the name sounds familiar. I can't place it like Kira, but the name sounds familiar. So I think Linny might be a returning one. So there's not going to be any of that kind of first game nerves. Yeah, I believe this is Linny's second year. I'm not, like I said, not putting money down on it to get anything right but Lenny's second year or he's been he's been at Wichita State so this is definitely he's definitely not new to EGF but right. I'm looking forward to see how uh how he retaliates because he's definitely I think he's definitely one of the uh better players for Wichita State in terms of just experience and skills like that and you... yes I can't believe I was right I honestly can't I, that was a guess but going up against a Bowser though that's the thing yeah. Two Bowsers in a row. That's that's the crazy thing. We had a Bowser Ditto on the main channel earlier, and now we have two Bowsers in a row here on the secondary channel. I mean, this is just Bowser City. Linny with a very aggressive percent onto Bowser, which is basically 25% onto anybody else. Goes for the down air to look for the spike, but wasn't quite able to land it. I think Bowser's really going to struggle here just in terms of raw speed. Really going to struggle to find these engagements against Mega Man. Speed and projectiles, that's the game. Projectiles especially is the game for Mega Man. And already off wow. to a great start from Lenny. Definitely, after watching that, he's definitely a vet. That's, that was some veteran play right there. Yeah, Linny, I mean, this is just wow. an absolute master class. We're not even a minute into the matchup, and Linny has found 60% out of the second stock of Natty Light. So just an amazing showing so far. Great air dodge there as well. There's the blade to make some space, tries to tank some damage. Lead. Wasn't getting able to land. It goes for the fire blade, but can't land that either. Into back air instead. Looks for the dunk and finds it! Natty Light, however, oh. does get those magnet hands, returns to the stage once again. Already kissing 100% on that second stock, just a little over a minute into the matchup. You know how rare it is to recover from a spike if you're not if you're Bowser or like any heavy that doesn't have the best recovery. It's pretty rare, so I, I'm impressed with Natty Light how Natty was just able to get back on stage as Bowser. But so far, like what we're seeing, this is some um, hope for Lenny. Able to survive that, impressive. Yeah, things looking pretty good for Linny there, but I've got to say Natty Light definitely strikes me as the type of player where seeks great improvement here in that high percentage area in the uh, full rage area, if you will. And of course, Bowser is hitting much harder with that full rage online. So I want to see what's brought to the table here from Mississippi State. Natty Light was able to find the stock tie up and had taken so much damage already that Linny got to continue to take advantage of that opportunity. Oh my and that's, that's the stock. That's oh it. Linny with the, with the technical literal zero to death there. Um, the grab into down air. Linny just cleans up game one. That was like two minutes. What a match. What a show Linny just gave us right there. Yeah, also, amazing. that was the same stage Geonosis was on as Bowser in that very first match last time. So I'm I'm not sure if that stage is favorable for a Bowser player. I don't know. What do you think, Zeppelins? I, I think that we're definitely seeing some similarities, like you said, in just in terms of what to expect um, coming out here, rather. I, I want to see, maybe they're relying a lot on that top platform. Just go look for the side Bs, just like that one. Natty Light really seemed to utilize the side B, and every time they did, they were up on top of the platform. That, that what happened down there. That might so be the fastest stock I've ever seen, actually. Let's see. Hold on. One, two... Three, four. So I'm five. trying. To I mean, that, that's like a four-second stock. I'm just trying to figure out what Lenny was doing uh, while they were off-screen, or and and Natty Light. I could not make out what was happening. I, was you can't grab an air, right? No, but Lin you Linny can't. had the stocks, and I think Lenny knew if I go down, if I get a single hit, that I win. You know, th that was the, they know they're not going to win via stocks. They know they're not going to win via points. Like, like Wichita State has, they've, they've lost the war, right? But Linny is looking to win the battle. They are really looking to find the opportunity here. And, oh my goodness, it's a very solid Mega Man gameplay so far. Already 53% again. So this is just great showing so far.
Wendy is really giving it, it and also kind of switching it up a little bit. We're seeing those up air tornadoes. We haven't really saw that a lot in the last game. So already switching it up a little bit, showing off Mega Man's arsenal right now. Yeah, absolutely. And this has just been very interesting. Smashville seems to be uh, the name of the game for both these players, and it's worked out very well in favor of them both times. Exactly. There's those tornadoes again already making a big impact in this match and that leaf shield i gotta say is pretty underrated and it looks like we got a little bit of a loading error hopefully it's not a lobby error hopefully it's not but apparently uh servers oh, yeah no. servers have been a little bit rough Ooh. tonight we saw that happen on the main channel as well i'm not quite sure the technicality on that is i think it's actually not a rage quit is it i would hope not. <laughs> no i i would <laughs> Looks like our producer's figuring out right now. Okay, Natty well, Light has disconnected. Um, so interesting. We're going to work on bringing Natty Light back, if possible. Um, definitely can't be a rage quit. They already won. Why do you have to be mad? Like, yeah, No, I mean, that that felt... That, that would have been, been a very weird time to intentionally leave. That felt mm -hmm. like a, perhaps a bit of a mistake coming through. Let's see... Oh, yeah, okay, so Mississippi State didn't even know that their player disconnected, but they just said they're going to forfeit it. Uh, Captain Connor Sanders in chat just said that they're going to go for the forfeit. So, um, yeah, that's... Well... That's some points that's for Wichita State. Uh, Not enough, but, hey, that they brought it close. Makes the score look a lot better. I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that definitely makes it look a lot closer Down for five. Wichita State, so... Uh, I want to say that there's definitely some great progress coming out here from Wichita State just in terms of um, improvement. Like I said that earlier, we saw some teams lose in some pretty aggressive fashions, but I don't feel like any of the players were lackluster, right? I feel like there's mm -hmm. definitely some room to improve, some growth, some room for growth. And it's week one. This is all about right. growth, right? So I'm, I'm right. really excited to see what both Wichita and Marquette from earlier are going to be bringing out in the later weeks with kind of these improvements down the line. Exactly. Definitely, you know, we've seen, and also kind of the Wichita State lineup, you start out with N-City, balled out, and then you end with Lenny, also balled out. So their lineups, in terms of like, if this is going to be a consistent lineup, no idea, but they start with that and finish that, they're going to be set, and now they just need to work on those uh, two, three, and four spots just to make sure, okay, right. so we, we need to work on our middle game and consistently hold out our lead, you know what I yeah. mean? Absolutely, and I believe we're going to get the chat with somebody from Miss State in just a couple of minutes here. Uh, we're going to throw it to a short break. We're going to get them in the room, and then we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to be jumping into an interview with the Jigglypuff player in-house for Mississippi State University. It is Kanu, who has made a powerful appearance so far. I'm definitely kind of staying on momentum with Mississippi State from last year. So, Kanu, how you doing? I'm doing well. Just been staying busy, just like everybody else. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, my question for you is a pretty simple one. You know, you guys are obviously reigning champs. You guys won against Nepal last year. So, um, you've made a couple of roster changes. Do you feel that those roster changes are really going to kind of help you guys' momentum as uh, bringing out a new roster kind of throws off what people know about you, right? So, do you think that's going to be kind of a positive improvement moving into the future? Uh, I think the film that people do have on us from last year will get mixed up a little bit because, like, sure. even though these people are new, a lot of them are very good and on par with the rest of our team. So I really feel like we could interchange any of our slots and probably right. still do fairly well. Absolutely. And can do a great win today. Uh, obviously, you guys are the reigning champions, so you kind of have that target on your back mentality going in. So I'm, my question is, is there, like, anything you guys do differently, like practice-wise or anything like that to keep you guys all focused in, during the season? uh yeah we do have like three of our top 10 players in like one apartment and we all kind of practice together every nice. single day so nice that's awesome and then obviously you guys um you know having that target on your back uh going the other way is there any school that you guys are like really looking forward to going up against or think that wow this school like they're pretty matched up well with us i think we, this would be a great legendary battle between us no <laughs> oh, okay. there you go fair enough that's, that's all i had septilins you got anything else yeah so i did want to ask um you guys have what is it 15 players on your roster in total something crazy yeah. like that so are we looking at your starting lineup or are you guys still trying to figure that out kind of putting the pieces together uh i say the only people who would probably be considered starting lineup out of today would be maize and yosefu sure yeah. So we still have another caliber of players just waiting. Yeah, definitely. I think that's something that really gives you guys a leg up is there's so many of you that it could be anybody. You know, when you go up against Mississippi State, it's like pulling names out of a hat. Roster depth. That's yeah. all I got to say. But um, uh, is there anybody you want to shout out or thank while we've got you here on the bus? Uh, Shout out to Smash Dogs. We are the club at Mississippi State. And just check us out on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, whatever, and just be on the lookout. We got some big tournaments cooking up. A lot of fun stuff going on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Canoe, thank you so much for joining us. And a huge congrats to you guys on, on a very strong victory here in week one. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Of course. Enjoy thank the rest you. of your night. You too. And with that, folks, that does bring tonight to a close. Uh, you know, we, of course, love having you all back here. We're stoked to be back. Thank you to Paul, Marquette, Mississippi, and Wichita for coming out, giving us your 110%. And, of course, thank all of you for watching. Thank you, Aeon, for everything you did in the back line. And thank you, South Beach, for sitting here with me for the past I don't know how long we've been here. But, folks, enjoy the rest of your night. Check your posture. Drink some water. Don't forget to love each other. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for Rocket League.